I've been excited to bring this video to you for some time. I am here in Wixom, Michigan today at the AEV facilities. Yes, the American Expedition Vehicles. You've seen it on the ZR2 Bison Silverado, Colorado. You've seen it on the AT4X AEV Edition. This is an amazing company and I get to tour the facilities today. So with that, come along with me and let's get going. So here he is. Jeff, what's How's going it going? On? How's it going? This Matt is Felderman. Matt nice Felderman. You. Matt, what is your job here at AEV? So I am the marketing manager here at AEV. I've uh, been here going on 11 years. Awesome. And yeah. you're going to take us through Absolutely. a tour. Okay, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Lead the way. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Uh, so this is our Michigan headquarters. Uh, we do have another office in Missoula, Montana, but this is really, for argument's sake, where the magic happens. Um, this is the home to our sales team, our marketing, finance, and best of all, the vehicle production, which you'll see. Um, we also have design and engineering all under one roof. So Perfect. Pretty cool. Yes, it is. Now, how, how, out of curiosity, how long has this building been here? Because it looks very new and it fresh. Is. It is. This is our first, believe it or not, this is our first new building that we were able to get. And we've been here, shoot probably six years by now. Wow. Yeah, okay. but um, since I've been with the company, this has been our fourth move. So it was really cool to finally get a new building that we could Absolutely. design you know, the way we wanted it. Perfect. Well, first of all, I mean, obviously I'm a GM guy, <laughs> Matt, but I got, I, got to, I got to look at this thing here for a second. Can you tell us a little bit what this is? This looks like it's like half and half of something almost. Yeah. <laughs> So this is kind of a relic in a way. Um, this was one of our early SEMA displays from when we were doing the TJ Brute. This is when we turned a TJ Wrangler into a long wheelbase little truck. Um, so you'll see it's silver and black. All the black pieces are what we were manufacturing, which was really groundbreaking oh, wow. at the time. Um, so we are doing our own fenders, heat reduction hood, cab closeout, hard top, bed. Um, so yeah, it was pretty, and to date this, this is 2002, maybe 2001. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that, that was really, that's really know, cool. One of the things that got us on the map. Yeah, these are some of the wheels we do. And so as far as suspension, as far as these wheels, for an example, can these be, uh, you know, are, are they specific to brands? Are, are you having, you know, the ability, let's say I like this wheel, for an example, can I get that on any number? Or are they, are you kind of developing these, you know, specific for specific brands? If, if that question kind of makes any sense. You yeah, know? It, it totally does. Our, our approach to wheel manufacturing is definitely vehicle specific. So all the wheels that you see here, these are all made for Jeeps whether it be an older or, <laughs> yeah, older or newer. Um, so they have a very vehicle specific offset, backspacing, uh, okay. width. They're very um, vehicle specific. Right. We have a whole nother line for trucks. So when you get into the Ram, Colorado, we have a whole different line for that. Perfect, that speaks to the quality, obviously what you guys do, you're taking the time, the attention to detail to making it fit, you know, specific things rather than just, that's a cool looking wheel, let's adapt this and make right. it fit it whatever, right? Right, it has a great right? bolt, bolt pattern and then yeah. go from there. Yeah, 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 which a lot of companies are gonna do, I, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Suspension development for us has always been huge, so these are some of the components we do for the Wrangler. Um, Jeep suspensions in general, we've, you know, had the reputation for quite a while of having the best dual sport or dual purpose suspension, something that's good for every day, but then also going to Moab and doing some of the for sure. you know, more gnarly trips. Yeah, awesome. Is this, this is a Gladiator, right? No, this is a Brute Double Cab. What? It looks like a Gladiator, but this was built by us in 2011. Um, we took a four-door Wrangler, stretched the wheelbase, added a five-foot bed, closed out the cab, and did a new hardtop. Wow, okay. And it 
looks strikingly similar to the Gladiator. <laughs> Very and, much so. It's, again, I'm not a cheap guy, <laughs> and so like you know, for me being you know at least experienced enough in the industry as it is, you know, I kind of figured that that's what this was. But yeah, no, it's um, we we like to think that we inspired the Gladiator design and maybe you know proved out that there was a business case for a Wrangler-based pickup truck. Which we have clearly seen that there is, yes. right? So, 2011 so, though, you 2011, said that's when this, this was the very first one we ever built. They built it by hand in Missoula, Montana. Um, and then in 2013, we started producing them. So right. they were sold through our network of dealerships. I think in total, we probably built about 700 over the course of the five years or so wow. we were building them. Um, maybe even a little less. It was kind of our halo vehicle yeah. for a while. That's crazy. Cool. It's re it's really neat to see that what you guys are doing here is is inspiring the you know the automotive manufacturers, right? That are tend to be obviously a little more reserved yeah. and they want to you know it's 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 a little more risky for them to test the market mm -hmm. sometimes than it would be for you guys who are you know hitting a certain niche of people who you know it's going to work for, right? So yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, it, it's cool that we're inspiring the OEMs because the OEMs are really who inspire us. Right. You know, all the products that we make, we want them to be at least as good as, you know, the parts that are coming off the, the vehicle. And, you know, just everything from the, you know, the quality of the components to the coatings to the testing, we try and replicate everything that the OEM does. Right. Now, this is definitely where the magic happens. So I don't have to black anything out or are we gonna, are we, nope. <laughs> we're okay. We're good. <laughs> you know, and while we're talking about how amazing AEV is and the products they make at protecting our off-road vehicles from the environment, it really got me to thinking, what else do I like to protect from the environment? Well, that's pretty clear. That is my cell phone. These things are not cheap anymore. I do a ton of filming, of course, with my cell phone. I am right now, as a matter of fact, and I don't trust the protection of my cell phone to any other phone case than the rugged phone case from Rockform, R-O-K-F-O-R-M. The cool part about it is it looks good. It really works well, again, in terms of protecting my phone, but it also works well because, and really cool, because it has, it's a magnetic phone case. And Rockform makes multiple different mounts for the inside of your vehicle with which your phone can mount to, right? And it's easy to use. In fact, right now, as I'm talking, I have my rugged phone case on my iPhone and it's on the windshield of my vehicle because it's attached magnetically to the magnetic suction phone mount that Rockform makes. Not only that, but they also make, again, cool things like a vent mount, very easy to use where you can slap your phone on inside the vehicle. Doesn't matter what vehicle you're in as well. This is a company I really suggest checking out. I love their cases, but again, I have the rugged phone case they also make another one that i use from time to time which is called the crystal case again it's just a bit you know basically a little bit difference in looks but amazing product check them out rokform.com yeah so this is where every aev branded vehicle is built um, we build everything from jeep wranglers to gladiators ram trucks okay. and colorados right so with the Colorado, just yeah. for an example, so that I understand, and it, it, we'll talk about this maybe you know later as well, and I see a Colorado actually over there. Um, when it comes to Colorados, are you, so you, you okay, let's say we, you know, we, we make all the, the parts for a, a ZR2 Colorado uh, bison. Right. Is that being, uh, the components are always put, uh, put on here, or is that being put on in a GM production line? Like how, where, where does that, that step come into, into play basically is what I'm, I'm asking. The, the best way, as far as the GM programs work, the best way to think about it is we manufacture the parts, we get them ready for GM, and then we send them to GM. Okay. You know, Colorado Bison the parts were insta installed at a second a second stage facility. Okay. Uh, Silverado Bison, the parts are being installed on the assembly line in Salau. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And so this is what they call what the prospector, right? Yeah. So this is the prospector. Um, this is a ram that is now on 37-inch tires. This truck is really more it's, of a workhorse. Um, it's it's huge. <laughs> they get bigger, and you'll you'll yeah. see why I say this is more of a workhorse. This is the package that we recommend for customers who may have a construction, you know, company uh, do a lot of towing really use their truck as a work truck 
this is one of the best platforms for it. Okay. Perfect. So on a, on a typical basis, I mean, obviously the industry is a little out of whack right now, but typically how many vehicles would you have in here at a time? Because it looks like you've already got, you know, quite a few in here. Oh, this, uh, is, as a, uh, this is kind of light. This is light, okay. Yeah. Which, are, again, I, I'm not overly surprised it, by. It all, it all corresponds with this time of year is weird because everyone's switching over. So right now, a lot of the GTC, our 23 model years have started to come okay. through. Ram, we're still building a lot of 22. So Rams, as more time goes on, the Rams tend to dry up a little bit. Right. And then all of a sudden the 23s will get here okay. and then it'll be like the floodgates open right, again. Right, right, right. Okay. So right now it's a little hit or miss. This one's pretty cool right here. Yeah, this is our uh, classic edition uh, package. So it's really just our, our normal Gladiator package with a little bit of a retro vibe to it. Okay. So we, we do the white painted wheels, white outside letters on the tires this unique so this so this package. sorry that that graphic is you guys then yeah, that's not a that's not a, no again you gotta excuse me because i'm I, not a jeep course, guy of course so so that's something you guys are doing yeah. oh that's like that's really cool yeah. that's even cooler than i thought oh, then, yeah. because i thought that was you know nope. you're kind of just adding your bit to what they've had there no so, this okay. thing came to us just a black gladiator i like the, i like that i like that badging there too that looks really cool on there. So you've done you've done things in the inside as well. The dash. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. That's that's really cool looking actually. I, again, I'm not a cheap guy, but this is really this is I, I'm a retro guy. I like right. uh, you know what I mean. Right. I love the retro yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think anyone in our generation they Absolutely. remember seeing like scramblers yeah. and CJs yeah. with like yeah. This. I mean, as a kid growing up, right, Jeeps were, were, yeah. were cool and, yeah. and, and seeing the stuff. And even when I get to, obviously, being a GM guy and seeing the GM retro stuff, I like that too. But no, that, that's a great that's a great job there, yeah. actually. I, read, I like that. Are you? Is that going to be... That's, can, going, so, that's going off to a dealer. Is it going to be different colors as well, or is it is it mainly the black? We, like, we, we have do like it a blue in black and, and white. Black okay. and white. Okay. Yep. Same same color graphics. Uh -huh. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I, I know we have a, a white, white one. Okay. Okay. So here's a question as we're touring through, about yeah. how many employees do you have that are kind of working out here that oh. these things are able to even tell me? <laughs> so in total, we're about 100 employees. Okay. I would say- That's including office office as well? Okay. Office, okay. both, both uh, locations. Um, we also have a warehouse, a secondary warehouse. It's purely just parts. Luckily, I didn't go there. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Um, I would say out here, we have probably about 30. Tenants. Okay, yeah. okay. Between paint and uh, vehicles. Busy, busy enough. Got it. Okay. Now we were talking about the Prospector, the regular Prospector, so to speak. This is the Prospector XL. Okay, so how does this differ then? So this has 40 inch tall tires. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> XL, That's wild. XL, a lot of people think it stands for extra large. That's a Roman numeral for 40. Thus oh, the, right. The tire okay. Size. That was my idea. That's a very good idea on twofold because it hits it exactly. both ways. Absolutely. Exactly. Oh wow. So yeah, the key differences are obviously tire size. You go from a 37 inch tall tire up to a 40. Okay. Although the suspension does not change. So it's still the same three inch suspension lift, but we add these. These are our high mark fender flares. Okay. They open up the wheel well significantly. And then we Which you would need to with, you know, oh, obviously yeah. a tire that size, right? Yeah. Wow. And the beauty is you get the flotation of a tire that size, but you keep your center of gravity nice and low. So here's a question. Let's say I own a 2500 Ram and, you know, I've already done a lift. This is, you know, previous to obviously I've already done a lift. I've already got big tires on this thing. Can I just come in and say, or can I just say order these yep. and adapt it to it? There's nothing I have to change on the vehicle. It's just a, it's just a little, flare, right? Very little. Okay. Likewise with, with the bumpers and things right. like that as well. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. These are, so these vehicles are really for the person who has got to a certain point in life that they don't want to build stuff anymore. They just want to buy something and drive it. Right. You know, and just enjoy it with a warranty. This is one way to do it where you're cutting the check all at once. Right. But for the people that want to buy the truck and they still enjoy working on it or they have the means to work on it, yes. they can buy all this stuff individually and basically recreate this. Yeah. 95% of it yeah. you can buy. Or they only want certain parts of it. The other thing too is, you know, again, 
we already know trucks are limited right now to begin with. And then you add the fact that you're trying to get one of these. You know, I, I can speak to you coming from a dealership. When it came to the ZR2 Bison, for an example, we talked about you know before, is that you know they, we just couldn't get our hands on one. But if I could get a Colorado, sure, I could you know get you know with one of your companies who will will, will up this outfit it for me, or at least buy certain components because maybe on a budget maybe my wife only right. allows me to spend a certain yeah. amount of time I can slowly build it as well because I know I'm going to keep the vehicle for you know 10 years or whatever it may be right so okay that's really cool yeah again not a Ram guy either but that's a very cool looking truck and I like the yeah. uh, I like I just like the the graphic now uh, what about this stuff is this is this from is this a Ram thing or is that uh, a, uh... this is a package that we offer okay so uh, that is that is yeah, you guys we offer too okay different uh, paint packages on... uh that's factory okay 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 yep we, um, the Ram yeah. people are going to think I'm silly. They already know this, but I, you know, whatever, right? So, <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah. There anymore, it's hard to keep track of the trend level. Yeah. But yeah, we offer paint packages all the way up to a complete vehicle resprint. Okay. So we can change the color of this to anything that you want. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Oh, we got one of th yeah. my brand over here. Yeah. Can so this this is, looks like it's in some sort of production right now. Like it looks can like you it's. Guess a, what's happening here? I, I have no idea. Uh, potentially so, maybe a front bumper and a grill. <laughs> so for the people that are wondering, what is involved in putting a AT4X AEB edition bumper on their non AT4X AEB or great answer? Yeah, the new great one. Question. That's what's involved. Wow. Okay. Um, our bumpers. There, there's a lot of components associated with our bumpers that need to be swapped out in order for it to work. Right. So we're going through that process right now, trying to document it, trying to create parts lists. It's not going to be easy, unfortunately. So would this be a 2022 then? Is this what this we're talking was, about? This was 2022. Okay. No, this is a 23, but the early... Yes, the first ones that still had the painted front bumper. Right. Okay, so right. if this so basically we're talking idea. we're talking if anybody owns a 2022 Are or an early release yeah. 2023, if you have the painted front bumper, yeah. this is what we have to do in order to accommodate right. the new style. Now, right. So we're, this we're talking a grill the, change and a bumper change then, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff other stuff too okay okay support. but cosmetically on the outside yeah. there's a two major major components aside from everything that goes yeah, in behind so it as it, well there's we call them headlight filler panels they're okay. the pieces that go under the headlight okay that's one component the grill obviously the bumper right but then there's some smaller components that you're going to need it's a pretty sizable parts list that you need. okay um, but yeah just to clarify so this is one of the trucks with the DSSV suspension, right? But it didn't come with our bumper, so it's one of those like eyeball half and half trucks. So that's what we got to, to prove this out. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, because yeah. it looks like you have the salt of wheels on this one. Yeah, so this. So that's like a 2023 wheel. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, bison wheel. Yeah. So um, yeah, to try and get it in the right stance, so we could uh, prove it. Out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it is the bison wheel. Yeah. That's not the that's not the AV edition. No. On that. no. Ah, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's the wheel off the bison. Right, right. Okay. Um, but we're gonna be, you know, this. We'll have more to come on this, right. and we'll we'll put the information out there because um, we've been getting a lot of requests for it. Yeah. Um, and we we know it's going to be involved. We know it may get expensive, but at least we want to put the information out. For there. sure. You know, because say someone's in a front end accident Collision. and they have the we opportunity can change it. to do this. Yeah, that's a great. It. That's never something everybody yeah. thought about. But yeah. We do have we do have some Colorados down there. I see that. Okay, this one this one is okay. A ZR2 uh, Bison that somebody sent here. Yeah, yeah. This is a what we call a retail customer. Okay. Um, someone who sent their Colorado to us. Um, to get one of our packages installed. So they already had the truck, but they wanted us to install our Colorado package, which consists of a winch, um, the, we basically, on a bison, we basically fill in everything that is missing from the factory. So we put a winch in there, we add lights to the front bumper and rear bumper. Um, we add one additional skid plate we install our high mark fender flares, which allow for the 35 inch tall tires. Okay. AEB wheels. We re gear it. Oh, you change the gearing on it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, to compensate for the, for for the different the tires. Yep. Different wheels. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Suspension wise, we keep it very simple. We use the Chevrolet Performance uh, one inch leveling kit. 
upper control arm and tie rod reinforcement sleeves. Okay. And it is just a phenomenal daily driver, weekend adventure vehicle, road tripper. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just phenomenal trucks. But yeah, this is something else that we offer. So people don't have to, if they already have the vehicle, they're not out of luck. Right. If they get it to us, we can still do the conversion. It's a little easier if someone's placing an order through the factory. It gets all done at one time. Yeah, it's a little yeah. more streamlined, but obviously. There's the option still. Yeah, and we have another one over there that's gonna be here for some more. All right. So these are, again, these are just ones that are just here that people are wanting you to outfit. These are both customer-owned yeah, vehicles yeah, then? This, yeah, this one for sure. I know that guy. That one's here for Highmark Fender Flares, 35s, free gear. Um, orange one, I'm not sure what that one's here for. But it's I'm a good-looking truck, say, though. Yeah. Yeah, now, I see they already have our wheels on it. I was just going to say, like, this this, ne this did not come from GM That's, that way. Uh, no, those are you our wheels. You not get that that way. Um, they're our V-Lock wheels. Um, but... It looks like he painted the rings. Well, those are painted. You can't you can't buy uh, orange rings like that, eh? Uh, uh Not through us. We just offer them two colors. She doesn't look that bad, though. It doesn't. No, it looks really cool. Okay. Now, all the parts that you see here on the car, it looks it looks super impressive. Lots of good stuff here, but none of this is what people get when they order parts from us. Um, online or when our dealers order parts. Everything you see here is to support the incoming volume of vehicles. What you're working on here. Yeah. 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 It's your so internal transfer, inventory. Yeah, we transfer the, the parts from our main warehouse over to here, stage it so when a vehicle comes in the door, we already have their parts on the shelf. Makes Just sense. Pull them, put them over there. Yeah, because when I was Googling how to get here, there was two different addresses. Yeah. I'm like, why Why are we having, this is a pretty big facility, yeah. but I can understand why this is their actual shop. This is where yeah. your office work is. Again, obviously all of this yeah. stuff here is just for, and that, that's actually quite a bit. When I'm, when I'm looking at this, that's a lot of stuff. A just lot to, of people to, think it's all in one. Like yeah. this is where their parts yeah. go, no. So your parts warehouse would be basically just this, like just this component, right? Like right. you just have stacks of, of things with, with people sending yep. stuff out, so. And a lot of uh, kitting. So everything that we sell, we assemble all the hardware packs and everything in house. So there's a whole department that like lays out all the hardware. Um, GM in general, that's an entirely like, we have a whole team dedicated to that. Okay. Like supporting like the Bison programs. Yeah. 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 It's, so if I wanted to order, let's say a bumper front bumper for my, you know, Colorado ZR, sure. ZR2, what's turnaround time like? I know you guys said you have a warehouse. Is this something that like it's a specific order? Is it something like it's a normal, as a normal inventory part? Like yeah. how does that work for you guys? Yeah, there, we really don't have any non inventory items that oh, okay. we sell. Okay. So, if we have something in stock, we typically get it out the same day or wow. next. Wow, okay. Yeah. So unless it's a brand new component that you guys are just develop, you know, just yeah, developing which, a short of, short of inventory or right. there's, you know, whatever, it's not usually right. an issue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've been fortunate this past year. We got, we, 2019, 2020 were really tough on us supply <laughs> chain wise. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, it, last year we corrected course quite a bit. This year so far it's been knock on wood going really well Better. so we haven't been affected too much on components that aren't made by us right which is which is nice all the steel stuff has been you know we've had good flow on that good here's the white version of our jt370 classic edition i don't know which one i like more honestly <laughs> they both have you know a little different character it's to it right so I, I think the white one is it I, it stand the the yellow and the other one stands out a bit more, but this also just has a different yeah. flow to it, right? So it, yeah, like you say, it's yeah, the white one, you know, it's color matched then with the wheels. Um, I, I I think I'm partial to the black, but I do like the white. And then you did that on the yeah on that one there too. Oh yeah. Oh okay. This has got the different le the yeah. different color. Oh, and then you got your badging up here too. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wow. And every vehicle we build, you can. Uh, get a shot of that every vehicle we build gets its own AEV VIN plate oh wow so that basically you know if the if the badges get stolen if the windshield breaks if all the little things that have our badges or logos on it go missing yeah you know this will always tell you that it's a vehicle we built oh. here 
That's interesting too, I didn't know that. And like in terms of resale value and all, it, it does have a bit of, it, it adds value to For it. For sure it would, yeah. Um, because there's been value added to this yeah, vehicle, obviously. Right. So this, this is your suspension on this yes, thing as well. Yes, it is. Outside of GM, um, all our suspension development, we work with uh, Bill Stein for okay. uh, Shock Team, um, where they'll work with us to essentially create the perfect shock for our suspensions on our vehicles, taking into account what our vehicles weigh, right. which is huge. Yeah, because you're so, adding weight. When it comes to anything that's right. AEV oriented between bumpers and skid plates right. and so on, that's right. a, a, obviously adding weight. So our suspensions are truly designed for like this Jeep with this front bumper and a winch, the rear bumper, the, like everything is dialed in. Right. Um, which is really cool. You can, it makes a big difference. For sure.